do you believe in evolution? I get that question a lot. And the first thing I say is, well, what do you mean by evolution? There are all sorts of different definitions of evolution. And part of the problem when you're talking about this is making sure you're talking about the same kind of evolution that the other person's talking about. So for example, let's think about Darwin's idea of evolution. Uh, in his book, On the Origin of Species, he talks a lot about how a certain species will adapt to become slightly different to meet some need they have. So for example, he saw all sorts of finches on different islands. And he noticed the finches were mostly the same, but the shapes of their bills were different. And he thought that perhaps these finches all came from a, a single species of finch. And over time, their bills developed in order to exploit different food supplies. So let's suppose a finch found himself on an island where most of the food was hard nuts. His beak would become short and stout, allowing him to crush those nuts. Uh, another finch on another island where there's a lot of insects in the rotting wood and so forth would develop a long slender beak to be able to peck the insects out of the wood. And so initially they were all one kind of finch, but over time they uh, adapted to have different kinds of bills and become different kinds of finches. Now that kind of evolution is readily observed in nature. We see it in a lot of different ways. We know that species can adapt to, uh, uh, to meet changes in their environment and so forth. So in the end, if you're talking about that kind of evolution, certainly I believe in it. After all, it's very well established and very well known. Uh, for simplicity, we often call this microevolution because in this kind of evolution, uh, the type of animal isn't really changing. The finches still remain finches, they just get different beaks and there are different bills and, and those kinds of things. So uh, in that kind of evolution, we've got basically the same set of DNA and it's just being shuffled around to change the specific characteristics of that particular organism. Microevolution is really easy to understood for, understand from a genetic level, and it's also easily observed. So, yes, microevolution exists, and I strongly believe in it. In fact, most creationists believe in it. However, when most people talk about evolution, they're often talking about something completely different. They're talking about one type of animal evolving into a completely different type of animal. So, for example, some evolutionists think that uh, fish slowly over time evolved into amphibians. Those are two completely different types of animals. And to figure out how a fish becomes an amphibian requires a lot of change to the DNA. Not the kind of change that goes on in microevolution. Instead, we have to add information to the fish's DNA in order to make it an amphibian. And from a genetic point of view, that's very, very hard to understand. It's really hard to understand how to add information to DNA. Uh, there are a few theories about how this might work, but nothing that's really consistent with the data at hand. So in order to believe in that kind of evolution, which we might call macroevolution, you have to believe that information can be added to DNA, even though we're not sure exactly how that could happen. Now, of course, just because we're not sure of how it could happen, that doesn't mean it didn't happen. After all, there's a lot we don't understand about nature, so it's quite likely that there are things that happen all the time we can't explain. So, if I want to believe in macroevolution, I have to at least find some physical evidence that it at one point happened. So if we go back to that fish evolving into an amphibian, if I could find a series of fossils that shows deep in detail how that fish changed over the generations to become an amphibian, then I could believe in evolution. The problem is such fossil sequences don't exist. You might have a couple fossils here and there that some evolutionists think tell us a little basic detail about how this change occurs, but you don't have some sequence that really maps it out. So when I look at macroevolution, I see something where we don't have a mechanism by which it could happen, and we don't have any physical evidence that it really did happen. So from a scientific point of view, I don't think it's reasonable to believe in macroevolution.